everyone and welcome back to part two of don't go to mount fuji um thank you for taking time off your busy schedules to listen in to us today we'll just wait a few minutes or really a few seconds for um our viewers to log in in the meantime for those of you who don't know us uh, my name is shiny and today i'm joined by christine and jesslyn the group of us are um, specializing in international property. So we hope to bring you some useful information and insightful um, information, actually, if you're considering to purchase overseas property. Um, how are you ladies doing today? Good, very good. So settling with the new, new control MCO rules in great because i can now go yes. out you know to have a walk with my especially with my little baby <laughs> that's fantastic so you're exercising your rights um for your your cmco rights <laughs> control movement what was it called control movement. control movement control orders <laughs> don't know how many controls. Control. <laughs> everything under control and what about you jess yeah i'm busy with my kids as usual but I have been very interested in knowing more about the property in Japan after Amos webinar last week. So yep. I've been doing a lot of research about the Japan, Osaka, and also the property. Okay. Yeah, um, Amos webinar was very informative. Very informative. It was. It was. Um, it was a very good one. And for those who missed out on our part one of don't go to Mount Fuji. We discussed a little bit on investing in Osaka and there was a webinar thereafter which was conducted by Mr. Amos and DWG. Now Mr. Amos is um, a seasoned investor with over 20 years of experience in the industry and um, he had a very very good session last Friday. Today we will be reviewing a little bit more about the peak um, which is located in Tenkachaya, Osaka. Our review today will be based on if I was the investor. So we're going to run through uh, the basic points, not too lengthy, of what we would do, if we, what we would look out for if we were the investor. Okay. Um, 
So the most important key when considering a property investment, whether it's for owner occupancy or if you're looking to um, rent it out, right, is location. And the saying goes location, location, location. So to kick off, to kick start the session, Christine, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about Tenga Chaya. Oh, yeah, sure. But before that, let me share the screen to show you on the, a little bit of the, you know, the map of the Osaka. Okay, here you go. Um, so, so, okay, so this is the map of the Osaka. So if you have been there, so you will be familiar with this map. Yep. Okay, so. Okay, this is Namba. So it is the city most famous entertainment district and also they offer a lot of the uh, dining and shopping choices. Mm -hmm. And also Dotongburi, the most popular tourist destination in Namba. Again, it is popular with shopping and entertainment district. It's also here. So a night, so at night in this Dotongburi, it's, it's lit by hundreds of neon lights. So in which you can yeah. find the famous Glico Running Man sign. The Glico Man. Yeah. So if you go further down, this is, you will come to this place called uh, Tenoji. Okay. So with this Tenoji, actually, the, uh, it is the third major downtown hub in Osaka. So they have actually going through a rapid uh, transform, uh, transforming from a city retro wasteland into a happening urban centre. So it is also a home for a major railway station. And then here you come. This is a Tenga Chaya. So yep. I show you another screen. Okay. So Tenga Chaya. Sorry. So Tenga Chaya is right here. Okay. I if you can it, see yeah. this green, the dark green, dark green line named Nankai Line. This is Nankai yeah. Line, which the Nankai Line is commuting between the airport and also to Nang Namba, Namba Station. Yeah. So Tega Jaya is 36 minutes away from airport and five minutes from and five minutes from Namba. So where Namba is almost like a um, you know the transit center like KL Central. So as you can see, it is very centrally located. Mm. There, is, there are also a great amenity around nearby, beside Namba, of course. So such as this, uh, Abeno Q Mall, Tenoji Mio, Tenoji Park, Sutenkaku Tower, and also this Sutenkaku uh, Shopping Street. Okay. So here I come to this next, next, uh, oh, sorry. So here come to these uh, local amenities. So the beauty about Achaya is they never proclaim as a tourist spot. So it's still mm -hmm. very raw. It is very traditional Japanese residential and commercial district. You don't see tourist thing like you know the souvenir, the souvenir shops. It's very very local, and you will notice this with the ren the ramen and only restaurant a bento bento. So a lot of going going school going kids or people on transit going to this train station or work. Basically, everyone going through the daily routine. Uh, so this is a good sign of non commercialized neighborhood, but only so close to Namba. Yeah, yeah. I mean, locality is very important. And having said that, it's always a positive when there's more locals in the area, right? I mean, it gives me more yeah. confidence when there is a bigger local demand because at the end of the day, um, you can never depend on the foreign market. It's always mm -hmm. the locals. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it's just similar like Malaysia, you know, as a local. We don't really stay and live in KLCC. But we may yeah. invest in, as a rental property. Even the more expensive location uh, in KL or are the located in KLCC and of course with the local interest. Yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting point to, uh, in relation to KL because 
not many i mean we may invest in klcc but we don't really live there so the locals are a little yeah. bit outside right, all right all i right. mean ultimately the goal is to ensure that the exit strategy yeah. is both favorable yeah. to both the buyer and the seller so your location plays a very important thing. yeah so transportation is very convenient here you have two stations nearby as you can see on the screen yeah. uh, which is Tenga Chaya and this uh, Kishino Moto. So in Tenga Chaya Kishino station, Moto. there's five major lines intersecting, including Nankai uh, line to the airport. Mm -hmm. So for Kishino Sato, you can access Namba, Sinshai Bashi, Umeda, and other parts of the city between I Love Nambas and Sinshai Bashi because of the shopping and great food. <laughs> I know, right? So, who doesn't like shopping? Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> my husband always says. So my husband always says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'm my always husband always says no. shopping with Christine is the rest. So say so with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always end up the with the a lot of shopping. But I don't oh. say the same thing. <laughs> But there's also shopping in uh, Tenga Chaya, and there's medical center and many other local uh, facility, and you don't really need to uh, travel out if you need anything, just like us in you know PJ or in Chalas. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's very important, right? To have all your amenities within your surroundings. And um, moving on next, let's talk a little bit about the peak, the peak, the development. Um, Jess, perhaps you could give the viewers a, a very brief summary of what the development is about. Uh, the, for this development, the developer is FMI Japan in collaboration with DWG. So the peak is a uh, very low density. Yeah. yeah, maybe I can put in some uh, information for you. Yeah, uh, it's a very low density and a freehold yeah. yeah. property is only mm -hmm. nine stories. 36 residential units yep. and only one one commercial unit so currently they are only releasing 10 units and which not many are left as the official launch was last mm. week last friday it is a very rare opportunity and yep. i believe the first release is always the best Would you like to yes. know about because the... Yes, of course. The first you have a lot of choices. Yeah. yeah. You to choose from. Yes, yes. You have, a, you have a spot for choice, yeah. Mm. And um, what about sizes, Jess? Because last week we spoke about sizing and you know, you turn to your right, you turn to your left, <laughs> you're sort of stuck in between the walls. And what sort of sizes um, are mm. we looking at in terms of apartment size? Yes, usually in Japan, right, their size is around 150 to 250 square feet. So, but this development yep. is uh, quite good because the size is from three mm -hmm. to four to six, four, seven square feet. So maybe I can show you some mm -hmm. of the, ah, yeah, this one, look at the photo. This is a layout yep. design for yeah. type A, three to four square this feet. This is a one bedroom. Yes, one bedroom. And then uh, you can see type B, ah, this is the one. Mm -hmm. This is slightly uh, four square feet square feet bigger is three to eight square feet okay, okay let me show you some of the two bedrooms yeah this is it six four seven square feet this is for two bedrooms so the size oh, is wow. quite good yeah that, that's actually a very generous size especially nice. for apartments close to the city yeah, yeah especially right. in japan <laughs> very nice you know japan you turn left turn right you can see everything <laughs> so yeah. with these sizes you won't see turn left turn right Yep, is that a small balcony outside? Yes, it is. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. This one, uh, one of the things uh, I checked. But again, the Japanese are very clever to design their units, right? It's actually very small, but cleverly mm -hmm. designed. Yeah, so, they are the yeah, master cool. of innovation. <laughs> Yeah, they can. So they as can you, yeah. fully utilize yeah, as you the may, space. Yeah, as you may heard um, from our session last week, Airbnb is actually legal in Osaka. Yes, I remember. Yeah, so right, they can have option to 
you know, to as to how to manage their rental. So though Tenga Chaya is very local, but it's definitely a choice for accommodation because it's so close to the city. Okay. I mean, speaking, I mean, since we're on the topic of Airbnb and short-term leasing, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the returns. What's the returns like? If you opt for Airbnb, right, the return is estimated uh, almost 10% gross return okay. on investment. And this is based on 85 occupancy at the estimate of 10,000 yen. Yes. Okay. 85%. 10,000 yen per night is uh, equivalent to Malaysia ringgit about 400. Okay. I have a few friends joining, joining us. <laughs> There's a lot of them joining us. Yeah. And um, I also see some messages come in from my sisters who pointed out about shopping cuisine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to show the bags, the bags that we have <laughs> from the Enelo shop. <laughs> you, you go with an empty bag and you come back with a full bag. <laughs> I mean, empty I'm, luggage. <laughs> empty luggage. Yes. And um, well, just, I mean, that's a very attractive projection that you're talking about, right? 85% mm -hmm. occupancy. Um, is, is, is that achievable? Okay. Yeah. And Actually, this, this was prior to the crazy pandemic, as you know. So, of course, now um, we are in totally different scenario worldwide. <laughs> yeah. We are unable to predict what is ahead of us until we find mm -hmm. a vaccine or the treatment. But the global economy is taking baby steps towards uh, the recovery. I believe this will turn around simultaneously with the uh, yeah. rebirth of this new economy. Yeah. yeah, true, true, true. And uh, I remember we spoke about urbanization in Osaka last week. The younger generation mm -hmm. from Greater Osaka and Interstate are moving mm -hmm. and living close to the city. And it's going yeah. to be a shortage of the accommodation in the due cost. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So therefore the accommodation is always required whether it is short or a long term lease. So if you are asking about tourists specifically, well, I think this this will return uh, this will return once travel bans are lifted. Unfortunately, yeah. we do not have exact dates and figures for this, but the pit doesn't settle until next year, you see. So there are plenty of time in between and hopefully the world will heal by then. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. I mean, yeah, I really like hope can do prediction. Yeah, nothing like this has ever happened before, right? And this is the yeah. first time for everyone. It's the first. And they always say there's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so let's just wait yeah. for that pot of gold to come yeah <laughs> and um what about rules and restrictions uh, for foreigners oh. to purchase yeah the beauty of buying in japan there is no restriction on the foreigner buying property so okay. it's fairly easy for everyone to purchase like everyone yeah. can buy yeah there is no restriction on ownership of land unlike other countries that impose ground lease, etc, etc, etc. Okay. You can actually also borrow to finance your property. We okay. were supposed to have a mortgage advisor with us today, but unfortunately, our schedules didn't permit. But please let us know if you require further information on finance. Uh, we will get in touch with you personally. Yeah, um, if you're interested to know a little bit more about the peak, um, please get in touch with us. We're happy to have a chat with you to understand your requirements and your personal circumstances, of course. And based on that, we can discuss options that's, that best suits your requirements, right? And um, before we, we, we wrap up, um, just maybe we can talk I mean, we, we can walk the viewers through the buying process and procedures so they know a little bit more. Yeah, maybe I can show you some slide presentation. Uh, give me a second. Mm. Mm. Okay, so if you are considering to purchase, currently the developer is collecting booking fee of 10000 instead of 25000 as normal practice. So I repeat, mm. it's 10000 only for the booking fee. So 10, 
10% of the first payment to be paid within 10 days. So very easy. 10,000, 10%, and 10 days from days. the reservation. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> you then require to sign a uh, uh, SPA, Sales Purchase Agreement. Sales with, and is that signed in Malaysia? Yes. Mm. Yeah, within seven days, not 10 days. Uh, this is seven days. Okay. And a down payment is 20% to be paid within a month after signing SPA. So the balance of the 70%, you will only pay it upon completion, which is uh, quarter four next year, end of next year. Mm. So remember, okay. 10,000, 10 10%, and within uh, 10 days from the reservation. 10, 10, 10. 10 days for now. That's fairly easy. I mean, we've pretty much covered the basics of if I was an investor. And we're just walking through what we generally look like. Once again, just the very basic information. And if you require more, um, uh, of course, if you contact us and we can sit with you personally and go through uh, in depth how... purchase and, 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 and a session with me last week and also the official launch that Amos uh, spoke at last Friday online you can watch it in our page I think the links are on our page um, there is there's two videos for you to look out for number one is don't look at Mount Iman, Amos at the uh, official launch and Again, the official launch was done online for clients who had registered. It was a sort of mm -hmm. pre-launch. Um, we'll be doing first official public launch, right? I repeat, public launch in Hong Kong on the 28th of May. So this will be released for the first time at an event. And uh, chances are, you know, most of it's Five or six at the moment, and the remaining will yeah. be done uh, um, in Hong Kong, um, depending on uh, the situation, if, if there's interest or not. And after after the ten units, they will release stage two of the remaining units. Okay. And obviously, the first ten is always the best, right? The first catch. And um, like, once again, if you need any more information about the development, please come uh, put your details in the comment below. Yeah. Drop us a PM or uh, there's a WhatsApp link as well on our Facebook page. Send us a WhatsApp and we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible. With that, we end our, our session for today. It was a quick one. Um, again, just covering the basics and we hope to be in touch and speak to you personally to go through in detail. Um, in, yeah. in the meantime, thank you all for watching tonight and do not forget to tune in